obviously there's going to be some growing pains with so many new guys. Is there a way to accelerate development of chemistry? You haven't been down this road for a while, but yeah. at various times through your career, you have faced this. You know, uh, probably not when it comes to the games. You know, it's one thing to click and practice. Kind of you're, you're in control of most of the things that you're doing, mm -hmm. uh, whereas the game, of course, can just be something much, very unexpected, unforeseen. Uh, so, you know, that's where it takes just – you need that time. And so accelerating it in terms of hopefully recruiting – good guys who uh, have a sense for how to play and are skilled, that probably helps, but there's no, re there's no substitute for time and playing together. Um, are you still looking for a rotation or you have a pretty good one in mind and then it's going to develop as you move forward? Yeah, I think I have a, we have a pretty good idea in mind. You know, uh, Matt, Matt's versatility and enabling them to play both forward and center really helps us. Tyler, we played a lot at guard the other day, which I think is uh, is something that could also really help us. Um, you know, I think Mike Walls might be able to get himself in the lineup um, as as he continues to to work and improve and become more comfortable. Um, but I I feel like I have a, a pretty good idea of it, and and we'll just kind of see how it takes shape uh, as we start to you know play a bunch of games. You spoke of Matt Grace. How is uh, the way he played in the A10 tournament last year and his seniority now perhaps shape the way you view him as opposed to last year? Well, I think I've al always viewed him as a really good player. I think that, um, you know, it, like everybody's career was it was just changed a little bit with the with the opportunity for Grant to, to return and Nate. You know, the, both positions he could play were occupied by guys who were, you know, three- and four-year starters. So, um you know, obviously, he was tremendous in the down the stretch last year, and um, but he's a really good player. I mean, he can do many, many things. He's one of our best defenders. Um, great feel for the game, uh, and so you know. But I do think it has given him a, a, some more confidence, and uh, you know, I think we'll see that as we go on. I think he played maybe the second most minutes on Monday, so I think that with the more and more opportunity, then more and more good things will happen for him. Hey, on another subject, does Richmond have an NIL collective? And do you think, if the answer is no, do you think Richmond needs something like that to compete? Well, I don't know what we call our athletic department wide. It's like some, we have a marketplace. Yes, we have a marketplace. School, school run, though. Yes, There's yeah. No third party. There is not. There is not. And, uh, yeah, it's something that uh, we're looking into and trying to figure out what the best way to – what the mechanics of it should be and what it could look like and, and how it could benefit our program. Well, will that be a required mechanism around college basketball as we – Yeah, I think, I think at certain levels and, and you know, and up for sure. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if it has to come in that format, um, but I, I think it will certainly be something that needs to happen. I don't know that – you know, some of the numbers that you see – that we saw in the off season, I don't know that it'll it'll be that high everywhere. Uh, I think it'll maybe come down a little bit more, just as the realities of college basketball and a, and a particular player's career may go. Uh, but I do think you'll probably have to have something in place in order to to compete. You know, it's just like it's just like another part of the checklist. Whereas if you don't have those things, uh, you're just quickly behind. Have you heard from friends of the program interested in being involved in something yes. like that? Yes, yes. Are you offering? Uh, uh, John? Conflict of interest, <laughs> otherwise yeah, I wouldn't. I'm sure you <laughs> <laughs> Good one, good one. The, inf the infusion of newness in, in your roster, the staff, et cetera, did it recharge your batteries this offseason to get ready for the year? Yeah. Well, it probably exhausted them first. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I feel like in a, in a way, yes. I mean, you know, um, it, it is, you know, I, I think the perception maybe because you've been somewhere a long time there, you know, I, I really feel I've never really needed that. In other words, my energy and enthusiasm for Richmond and for our program is, I feel like has always been super high. 
But I do think it is, uh, you know, I'd like to see Will came in as video coordinator and, and operations and now an assistant coach, Pete, Peter Thomas, who has played for us, was operations and now back. That That is, there is some, there, it's just exciting and to see those guys and uh, to have those guys form their opinions and their input and how they impact our program, that is exciting to see. Uh, and then having new players is, you know, this was, uh, it was, it's unique around the country. It was extremely unique at Richmond because all those guys came back. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think, like, you know, last year with the, coaching the team last year, uh, we had, one, we had 20 players. Uh, there's such a difference between Grant Golden's age and experience versus Marcus Randolph's age and experience. And so that was – and and, you know – guys in their fifth and sixth year you know um there there's an idea of like in coaching you know is like you know a coach traditionally says to the player do you think you're doing us a favor in this case they kind of were doing us a favor so there was a balance in terms of how you know they had heard a lot of the coaching before the the um the speeches you know, so I do think in that regard, it's it's exciting, and it is there. There is new, and those guys, you know, Jacob and Grant, Nate, Nick. I mean, they're incredible to coach, um, and that's why they, you know, there's part of the, they stayed is because those are the guys that they appreciate um, the consistency and and the excitement of Richmond basketball. Uh, they didn't just need to seek something new. Uh, but it is, you know, to have different guys out there and trying to blend a certain team and put together lineups that does make it that does make it a little bit more exciting. Your excitement level to see Jason on the floor finally did he even exceed your expectations of what you thought he would do in his first game? Yeah, he was really good. I, I feel like in the second half he was terrific. I, I think in the first half, like probably every freshman that's ever played uh, college basketball, I feel like you know he was just a little bit you know, waiting for when the moment was going to happen rather than going and attacking it and making it happen. I think in the second half he really did. But to play, you know, a majority of the game, no turnover, scored, um, you know, he, he's just a really good player. Uh, I know he had a huge uh, crowd on hand to, to support him. Um, and I understand why. I mean, he's, he's you know, He's been so successful. He's a great kid. Uh, we're lucky to have him, and I think he could, you know, I think that's just the beginning for him. Hey, you did a, a decent number of speaking engagements over, over the summer. Did you feel from the fan base that there was a, a revitalization and energy of, wow, let's see what the Spiders can do now with no Grant Gold yeah. and Jacob, et cetera? I did. I, I feel like uh, that was definitely part of it. I also feel like this is the, you know, two seasons ago with the interruptions. Last season, the beginning was still a little bit of – you know, is everybody allowed to come? You know, how are we selling concessions? You know, so those those kinds of things. Whereas this year, so I think the renewed part of it's back to normal college basketball. You know, a chance to go to every game and enjoy every game, and then also yes, some of the new faces and you know, you know, people also being so in touch with the recruiting and the, you know, now has has made it so they. People have more access to information and, and some of the things that are going on. So I did definitely feel like that. There's a, an enthusiasm for this group in particular. Do you anticipate any impact on the ceremony tomorrow night with the start of the game, much like a, a senior night yeah. type of thing, perhaps? Well, yeah, I, I've been thinking about that. I, I hope not. You know, I mean, hopefully it's it's great and wonderful. But of course, that's you know, that's there, there's a lot of enthusiasm and nostalgia, and so then you know you just jump in and try to play the game. So I hope not, but I mean, that's the risk you run when you, when you, when you do something like this and it's worthwhile because of how, how special, um, you know, it is for, for us to be able to raise the banner. Coach Mooney, Richmond uh, signed two fellows yesterday. You have two scholarships left. Is it the Spiders' plan to hold those for transfers or to be determined? Yeah, probably a little bit to be determined. I, I think that, um, you know, we we would really like to always have guys who are here four and five years, uh, but also recognize that uh, you know, in the the new way things are laid out, that the the more likely scenario, especially in the spring, is to have guys from the transfer portal. But I don't think we're gonna. You know, we used to worry about balancing the classes with seniors. Juniors, <laughs> you know, I think all of those things are a little antiquated now. So 
uh, we'll try to get the best players we can. And and um, but I do like having guys who are here four and five years because, you know, I just feel like that's a little bit how we're built. And when you can have guys who can see their improvement, see their impact grow, uh, they have they tend to have a greater ownership of the program. And I feel like that's you know something that uh, is pretty valuable for us. Was it difficult for you? to adjust to the new wave of recruiting and bringing in more transfers? Because you have been, like you said, you've been a guy that wants to develop four- and five-year players. So was it hard for you personally to kind of adjust to that, to the the change? Yeah, not not really. I mean, I have my, you know, thoughts and opinions on the transfer portal, but if, you know, we have to do whatever can benefit us to be able to to get good players. I, I will say the three guys that we've signed have made me feel great about it because, you know, Way back before there were many transfers, uh, the, the first thing a coach would ask is, well, why is he transferring? And there, there was kind of a negative attached to just the fact that he's transferring. You know, obviously that has long been long gone, but these three guys in particular uh, are just great. I mean, they're very much Richmond-type guys in terms of how they play, um, you know, how they go about their business, their ability to get along with the other guys, uh, take care of their schoolwork, you know, be – Great guys, so that has really given me some some confidence that we'll we'll be able to find guys who really fit our program and and can excel here. As uh, as last season closed in the A10 tournament, you were very impactful, and I wonder if that impact may have carried over for you in terms of confidence. Um, I would I would definitely say it has. Um, just being able to do um, what we did, what I did on that stage. Um, kind of uh, proved to myself that you know I could really do that on uh, in any game. So yeah, I would say that confidence has definitely carried over for me. Um, how uh, otherwise has the role that you play uh, sort of modified given the, your age and the lack of uh, Grant and Gilliard and all those fellas? Yeah, I mean definitely losing all those guys who you know kind of carried so much of the load. Um, has put some of that on me and, and guys like Andre and guys who who, who didn't have to um, carry that much when those guys were still here. Um, so I de- have definitely felt that carry over so far, and I feel like we've adjusted to it pretty well so far. Um, I like that role. I mean, I like um, having more put on me. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, I think it's gone well so far. Uh, from what we can see, you're not a, a very vocal guy in terms of shaking people up and yelling, stuff like that. Um, that's OK with your teammates? They don't want to see that? Or that's just not you? No, they, they know that's not me. I'm more of a, a lead by example kind of guy, and I think they know that. Um, I'm not into the, all, the, all the hoorah stuff exactly. It's just not me. Um, and I, I think they're OK with that, and they know that. Thank you. How did your offseason change from that run in the A-10 tournament and then the loss of all of those guys that were there with you uh, since you've basically been here at Richmond? Yeah, I, I mean, it's weird because, I mean, like I've said before, it's like ever since I've uh, been a freshman, it's felt like the same team. Um, so just to go through, like, the first offseason with kind of a new group, a new core, um, it was something that was different. It was weird, but it was also exciting. Uh, to get like a kind of a new feel and a, a new look, even with the uh, newer coaching staff. Um, so it was exciting. Did what you did in the A-10 tournament and what the team did, did that impact your decision at all? Or was it all a foregone conclusion you were coming back? Or how did that work? Um, I, I, I really tried my best not to think about it during the season. I, I was trying really hard to focus on you know, the matter at hand. But I did have a, a good sense that I, I wanted to come back regardless. But um, kind of after how that the end of the season went, how, how well it all went, it just kind of it made me even more excited to to come back and accept a bigger role. Uh, I'll ask the same question I asked Coach. Impact of tomorrow night's ceremony on you guys when the game tips off five minutes later after all that emotion? Yeah, um, kind of like Coach was saying. I mean, you, you hope it doesn't have too much of a impact and you can still be able to focus on the the matter at hand. Um, But it will be nice to reminisce a little bit. Um, But then, uh, yeah, like like he said, we just got to 
get right back onto uh, Northern Iowa 